of John, chapter number 15. John, chapter number 15. Galatians, chapter number 5 is our foundational text uh, for the, um, <clears throat> the next several weeks. I'll meet you in John 15 in just a second, but you'll remember the fruit of the Spirit last week was love, and today we want to talk about joy. Amen. The fruit of the Spirit in our life should be joy. So I want you to look around real quick, see if you see somebody that's got some joy in the Lord. Somebody in this building should have the joy of the Lord today. Amen. In John 15, Jesus uh, discusses uh, the issue with, with his disciples. How many believe God wants us to have joy? Amen. The Bible is full of reminding us to be a joyful people as well as Jesus Christ. In John chapter number 15 and verse number 11, Jesus said, These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be empty. That your joy might be a little That your joy might be, do you have full joy? I don't know how much joy that is. Maybe some have a bigger capacity than others. I don't, I don't know. But I want my joy to be full. And that's what Jesus said. These words have I spoken unto you that your joy might be full. May the Lord bless you as you're seated in the presence of the Lord today. Amen. Do you know most of us, when we think about joyful people, <clears throat> I thought about this week, we just assume that they were born that way. We really do. When we look around and see joyful people, we just assume that they were born with that attitude and they were born with it. We just decide that they are happy by nature, that they are sanguine in personalities. But I would like for you to consider today as we talk about joy that it is really a choice. A choice that we make. Paul said that God's spirit in our life produces joy. So if you have the spirit of God in your life, without uh, question, we should have joy in our life. I thought this week, I always had an uncle and uh, he always said, it's a sure bet. I thought about that growing up. Now, he wasn't saved because we know saved folks don't bet, but he always said it's a sure bet. Well, that's kind of ironic, isn't it? If it's a bet, it's not sure. And if it's sure, it's not a bet. There's nothing sure about a bet. A bet implies that it's not sure. Well, can a joyless Christian, you think there's such a thing? Do you think there should be such a creature in the kingdom of God, a joyless Christian? I think not. For the fruit of the Spirit in our lives is love and joy. But you know, sometimes folks feel like life has just squeezed the joy out of their life. You ever been around someone you just felt like absolutely sapped you of all the joy that you had in your life? That's why we, I hope they're not on the pew with you here this morning, but that is why we must have a constant flow of the Spirit of God in our lives because as we live and serve Jesus Christ and we expend the joy of the Lord, we must maintain the Spirit of God in our lives because as the Spirit of God floods my heart, He also brings me the joy of the Lord. That's why today I want to discuss what, what may rob us of our joy. Then let's, let's decide today that we're going to be a joyful people. What, how would your life be different this week if you just decided that you're going to be a joyful person? What if in the morning you woke up, you just took out a pen and, and a piece of paper and you wrote 10 things that you were joyful and thankful for? Would your day go different? One fella has made a career on teaching people how to laugh in the corporate world. He said, spend your day, the first seven seconds of every day, just laughing. Now, let's, you want to try it right now? You just want, it would change the atmosphere in the building. Think about it, just for a second. That's why the Bible teaches us that a cheerful heart or a, a laugh in our spirit, at times it doeth as good as Medicine. 
So if the corporate world knows that laughing in a joyful attitude can can cause us to have a better day, how much more as the people of God, with the Spirit of God in our hearts and our lives, it should produce a joyful attitude in our life. I challenge you in the morning, you think it's a bad day, spend seven seconds. Some of you may have to spend 70 seconds. Spend seven minutes, whatever it takes. Maybe you had a really bad day. But spend some time enjoying the presence of of the Lord. All of us here today can separate our lives quickly into three categories, and I really felt like the Lord laid this on my heart to share with you today. And there are three joy robbers in our life. As I've thought about all the people that I've talked about, counseled, preached to down through the years, our life can be quickly divided into three categories, the past, the present, and the future. And every one of those things will also attempt to be a joy robber in our life the past, the present, and the future. And if you'll allow me today, let's look at these three things and then I'll be done and out of your way. But the first joy robber in our life can be if something has gone wrong in our past. If something didn't work out like we wanted it to. How many times have we heard about traumatic events in people's life? Maybe the loss of someone or something. Maybe a bad doctor's report. Maybe a disease that we never planned on having. Maybe a betrayal. Some have went through divorce. Some have endured tremendous failure and and agonizing disappointment in their life. And so all of their life is spent thinking about some traumatic event in their past. And it robs them the joy of today because of what happened happened in their past. I thought about Psalms chapter number 51. It is a man that is trying to get back up on his feet after one of the most horrendous mistakes and tragic events in a man's life. We know him as King David. We know it as an adulterous relationship that led to some some terrible terrible uh, scars in his life that uh, in, in some respects David not he never got over in the kingdom. But Psalms chapter number 51 is David trying to get over the past that he once again can have the joy of the Lord. Listen to him in verse number 2 as he says, wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Listen to verse number 8 as he says, make me to hear joy. Notice that? He said, make me to hear joy. David was at a point in his life because what he had done in his in his past, yes, it was horrendous, it was wrong, it was sinful, and he paid the price for it. But where David stood at his present life, it was because of the past mistakes that he made that David could no longer enjoy the presence of God in his life. And so David does something very wise. He said, I've got to come to grips with the past. I've got to deal with this issue that if I'm ever going to go forward, if I'm ever going to enjoy the Spirit of God again in my life, I've got to get this thing healed. And so David said, oh God, make me to hear joy and gladness again. Create in me a clean heart. But verse number 12, you quoted it and I've quoted as well. When he said, restore unto me. Matter of fact, see if you know the rest of the verse. Restore unto me the the joy. What did he say? Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. You and I have quoted that in different times of our life, but it came from a man who was beat down by mistakes. It came from a king who he he had called great scars into his kingdom, but he's trying to get back up and he's trying to deal with past sin and he said, restore unto me the joy joy of thy salvation. There is something that is robbing me of my joy. And it's not tomorrow, but it's yesterday. And maybe there are some of you in the house of God here today that you're not enjoying life like God wants you to. Maybe you don't have the joy of God in your heart today. And it's not because of what you're going through or what you think tomorrow holds. But it's because of a past mistake. Maybe it's a failure or a 
disappointment uh, or somebody done you wrong and betrayed you uh, and it's just buried in your past uh, and it's ruining today because of the mistakes or the pain of yesterday. Uh, but I would to God every one of in this is in this building today uh, would be able to say with David, uh, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Uh, amen. David got back up. Uh, amen. Can I tell you this was the middle point uh, of his kingship? Uh, I said it was the middle point. Uh, God gave him just as long in the future as God did in the past. Uh, I'm going to tell you, you don't have to ruin today and tomorrow uh, because of yesterday. Uh, can I preach about a God that reaches down uh, into the miry pit of sin? Uh, anybody glad today for a God of a second chance? Uh, anybody had to go back to God uh, and say, I don't want to ruin tomorrow uh, because of yesterday. Uh, yet I shouldn't have done it. Uh, and yes, it hurt. Uh, and I've wept the night away. Uh, but God, take me into the land of blessing. Uh, take me into the land of fruitfulness. Uh, give me a bright tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to tell you, God loves mercy. Uh, matter of fact, it was David. Uh, as I went back and looked, as he gave Solomon the commands for the temple. Uh, in, in First Chronicles chapter number 29, I believe. Uh, and he talked about the porches. Uh, he talked about a lot of aspects of the house of God. Uh, but notice in First Chronicles 29, around verse number 10, uh, he said, and make a place uh, for the mercy seat. Uh, make a place uh, for the mercy seat. Uh, David made sure uh, that when Solomon built the house of God, uh, there had to be a place uh, for the mercy seat. Uh, let me preach to you today uh, that if we lose the mercy of God, uh, if we forget uh, that He is a God of restoration, uh, that He is a God that can make broken things whole, uh, that He's a God uh, that can give us a second chance and a third chance and a fifth chance, uh, I'm glad there's mercy in the house of God today. Uh, amen. There have been times I made some wrong mistakes. Uh, I made some bad, bad, bad choices. Uh, but when I came back to God, uh, I found an everlasting Father uh, who loved me uh, and let me bury the past. Uh, and now I can do what Warren Wearsby said about the past. Uh, he said, confess it, cleanse it, and celebrate that it's over. Uh, I said, confess it, uh, cleanse it, uh, and celebrate. Uh, amen. Oh, what sins are you talking about? Uh, I said, I've got confessed. Uh, I've confessed them to God. Uh, I've been cleansed. Uh, and today I can celebrate thanking God that it brought me up out of sin. Uh, he wrote my name down in the land book of life. Uh, anybody else glad today uh, that he's a God that forgives? Hallelujah. Glory. There are a lot of folks that their past can be a joy robber. I read this week about the former or the current president of the Fuji Bank, Stanley Prangnath. I believe is how you say it. P-R-A-I-M-N-A-T-H. He was in the South Tower of the World Trade Center on 9-11. When he looked out at the Statue of Liberty and saw a plane that was headed for his building. As that plane crashed in, he thought he was going to die. The smell of jet fuel permeated the atmosphere. He thought, God, I've got to get home to my children. I want to see my wife again. At that time, someone came to help him. It was an executive from three floors down that was helping people out of the building. Stanley realized that God was not done with his life at that point. He got on fire for the Lord. He has a box in his house. It's marked deliverance. He took the clothes that he was wearing that day. They were tattered, torn, and bloodied. He folded them up and put them in that box marked deliverance. And told his wife, if I ever get spiritually cold, I want you to get me to open that box and realize what all God has done for me. 
You know what some of you need to do today when the devil tries to bring up your past? When the devil tries to remind you of mistakes and things and wrong mistakes and failures and disappointments, gets you a box marked deliverance. Gets you some things and you know God brought you out of. Put them down in that box of deliverance. Uh, and every time you look at that box, celebrate the fact uh, God's brought me a mighty long way. Uh, and when the devil tries to get you to go back to yesterday, uh, amen, look forward to tomorrow uh, and say, God, you've delivered me from that. Uh, whom the sun sets free uh, is free indeed uh, I'm not what I used to be uh, I've been changed uh, hey, amen I know there's a lot that don't believe this uh, but friend I believe that when you get saved uh, you're a new creature in Christ Jesus uh, hey, amen I believe you can shout to the fact what sins uh, are you talking about uh, we've all come up short uh, there's none righteous no not one uh, but thank God uh, I said thank God God uh, for the second chance of God's mercy uh, and if your past here today uh, I said if your past here today is trying to rob you of your joy the devil is a liar uh, take authority in the name of Jesus uh, and said I may not change yesterday uh, but I know I can change tomorrow uh, I may not be able to undo it uh, but I never have to repeat it uh, I'm not a failure but an overcomer uh, I'm not a victim but a victor uh, and great is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. There's a lot of folks their past is a joy robber. For some folks, remember I said your life can be divided into three categories. The past. How many be honest with me today and say the devil at times has tried to run your joy with your past? I got my hand up. Well, how many can look around sometimes at circumstances that are going on and your joy isn't full? Not because of the past, but because of the present. I thought about the Apostle Paul in Philippians chapter number 4 and verse number 12. He said these words, I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, to abound and suffer need. The apostle Paul was one that knew that if he was enjoying the victory of God or whether he was being shipwrecked or beaten and put in jail, he was able to maintain the victory of the Lord. He also said in that chapter, rejoice in the Lord always rejoice in the Lord always and he knew their reaction would be just like your reaction uh, kind of nonchalant uh, and so he said and again I say uh, rejoice uh, he said it again uh, he said if you didn't get it the first time uh, I want to run this by you again uh, that in every day in every situation uh, we can be a people that rejoice uh, I said we can rejoice uh, in the midst of what ever is going on in our life. It was T.L. Moody that said, real joy comes from the Lord. Joy flows right through trouble. It flows right through the dark. It flows through the night as well as the day. It flows through all persecution and opposition. It is an unceasing fountain bubbling up in the heart. A secret spring the world can't see and doesn't know anything about. The Lord gives his people perpetual joy when they walk in obedience to him. Joy, joy, unspeakable joy. Your past can be a joy robber. But remember what I said at the beginning of the message. It's at this point right here when we see somebody going through something and they keep the joy of the Lord, we say, well, they're just, that's how they were born. That's their nature. But I'm talking about the fruit of the Spirit. It should be in all of our lives. It shouldn't just be with those that are born with a more optimistic outlook, but the most pessimistic, the most depressed individual when their heart is flooded with the Spirit of God, should have joy. 
How you didn't get that? You, you didn't get it. In the midst of abounding and in the midst of being abased. In the midst of Sunday morning service. Uh, in the midst of the boss not doing us right on Tuesday. In the midst of worship on Sunday. And in the midst of the kids acting up on Thursday. In the midst of things going right uh, and things not going well. Uh, in the midst of getting a raise. Uh, in the midst of losing our job. Uh, in the midst of feeling well. In the midst of feeling sick. Uh, we know how to maintain joy. It is a choice in our life. Joni Erickson Talder was a a person that I I was able to meet while I was in college. And those of you that have read her writings, she was one that dove into the shallow end of a pool. It left her as a paraplegic. And she's written many books, given thousands of speeches. I read about her life recently. And she was speaking at a, a women's conference. And they ask her, how do you always maintain joy? You always seem to be upbeat. She said, well, every morning at 6 a.m., my husband leaves for work. At 7 a.m. is when the nurses arrive to get me up out of bed, to bathe me and prepare me for the day put me in my wheelchair and began to take me to different places. She said, so from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m., I'm alone, laying in my bedroom. There's times I cry. There's times I pray. There's times I beg God to take me. There's times I beg God to heal me. But for an hour, as I try to stretch and work muscles, as I writhe in pain on different days, for an hour, it's me and me alone. And she said, any joy you see today was one this morning between six and seven A.M. You know what she's saying? It's a choice. It's a choice. It's a choice. The fruit of the Spirit in our life is joy. You say, Brother Austin, you're not going through what I'm going through. You're right. But oh, whether it's the past that can rob our joy or what you're going through right now. Isaiah 12 and 3 says, Therefore with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. Every morning when I wake up, you know what I need to do? I need to reach down into the well of salvation. I need to reach down into the presence of God's Spirit and allow the Spirit of God into my heart and say what I'm going through right now. I will not allow to steal my joy. I'm not going to allow it to steal and to rob God's presence out of my life. But I love the song we sing. I have somebody with me. When the sun comes up and I wake up in the morning, I said whether it's feast or famine, whether it's a good day or a hard day, I have somebody with me. Anybody glad for Jesus Christ? Anybody glad for the Son of God? I said He lives in us. He is my Savior. And He is my healer. Who would you want to go with you through the dark days of life? Who else would you want to be your best friend? Who else would you want to be the one that walks beside you except the sea walker and the blind man healer? Who else? I said it's Jesus. I said it's Jesus. And he said, your joy should be full. Hallelujah. But your life is three categories. How many can look just right now at the things you're going through? Say, I I can have joy in the midst of that. Can you do it? Can you do it? The third category and the third joy robber, future. Where's this sickness going to take me? 
I don't know if I have children, they might. They might not serve God. If I, if I have children, they might, they might be born with a sickness. If I start college, I may not finish. I may, I may flunk out. If I start that company, it may fold. I, if I try to work at home, if I try to quit my job and stay home with my children, we may not be able to make it financially. Oh, we're getting older. We've been married a long time. One of us is going to go before the other one. I'm going to be alone. Nobody's going to care. Nobody's. All of a sudden, the future becomes so intimidating. David learned how to deal with his past. Paul learned how to deal with the present. But let me give you the scripture that I felt the Lord laid on my heart for the present. If anyone should have lost joy because of the future, It would have been the Lord Jesus Christ. But in Hebrews 12 and 3, 12 and 2, Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who, wait, 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 who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Jesus Christ knowing, knowing that he was headed to Calvary. Knowing that he was going to be crucified. And how could Paul say it was a joy for Jesus Christ. He didn't look just at the cross. He looked past it. I said he looked beyond it. Who for the joy that was set before him. He looked to the resurrection. He looked to all of those that would be saved. And he said, I can take the cross because of what's on the other side. I can take the nails because of what's on the other side. I come to preach to you today. We don't live in a perfect world and we never will. But as a child of God, I see a yonder day where there is no suffering, where there is no sickness, where there is no death where there is no pain I look yonder to that celestial city where there are no funeral homes where there are no hospitals I look yonder to that blessed day when there will be no more backsliding there will be no more sin there will be no more suffering there will be no more Satan so whatever I gotta go through if I gotta go through a valley if I gotta cross a river if I gotta go into a lion's den if I gotta go through a fiery furnace I said I'm going I said I'm going I'm going to heaven I want to see Jesus oh who for the joy who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross who's going to be saved The same that endure. We have changed our gospel to think that we have to enjoy everything. Your Bible does not say, He that enjoys to the end, the same shall be saved. Didn't say that. He that, when I think about enduring, I think about people running marathons. I think about needles and hospital. Enduring is not a pleasant word to me. I think of boot camp and thesis papers. Enduring. What do you think of? What do you think of? What do you have to endure? Well, but I'm going through. Anybody in this building you're going to go through? The future can rob so many of their joy. We've talked about not worrying about things that 
might not come to pass. We don't live in a perfect world. But I believe there's a day that's coming when everything's going to be perfect. You might get made fun of on the job. Now don't put yourself in my shoes. Put yourself in Jesus' shoes. If he can go through that for you, can you go through what you're going through for him? Oh, you didn't get it. I said if he went through that for me and for you, he endured the cross. I can endure whatever I gotta go through. One more river to climb, or one more river to cross, one more mountain to climb, one more valley God I gotta go through, leaving all the trouble behind. I said, let's get ready to leave this world. I said, let's quit making plans like we're gonna be here forever. The trumpet's getting ready to sound. I said, we're getting ready to leave this world. Just a few more days. I'm going to keep on enduring. I said, I'm going to keep on enduring. Somebody say, run on. I say, run on. I say, run on. We're circled around by a great cloud of witnesses. If heaven could speak to us today, you know what they'd be saying? The Old Testament patriarchs, they'd be saying, run on. Run on. If the prophets could speak, they'd be saying, run on. Run on. If the New Testament preachers, if they could preach one more time it say run on I say run on I say come on church let's run on in the midst of all of this weeping may endure for the night I said weeping may endure for the night but joy but joy but joy cometh in the morning it's almost over I said it's wrapping up I said it's fixing to close we're fixing to see the last chapter the trumpet's ready the sound and it's all going to be over and we're headed out who for the joy All right, I'm done preaching but we're not done with the service because I need to find out if there's any joy robbers taking your joy so this is how I want to do the altar call today we're going to break it into three altar calls you say my lord one's enough we're going to do three. Three altar calls. And we can do it in about 60 seconds if you hear from the Spirit of the Lord. Brother Mark, come on this morning. Brother Brent, I want you to sing in verse number two of your song. Hey, Amen. Stand with me this morning right now. Here's the most important part of the service. It's what decision you're going to make. What if you get up in the morning and the first thing you do is write ten things you're joyful about what about matter of fact I'll show you turn and shake somebody's hand and don't say anything just laugh for about five seconds go ahead right now just do it I didn't say laugh at them joy anybody feel joy right now joy in the Lord Joy, 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 unspeakable joy. I don't have words to preach about it. The Bible said it's unspeakable, but I feel it. I said I can't preach about it, but I feel it. I said I feel it in my hands, and I feel it in my feet. I felt it when I've been sick. I felt it in the darkest days of life. I said I felt it in the bad news of life. It's joy. I know the devil doesn't want you to have it. How many of you locked your cars in the parking lot? Anybody? You got anything in there valuable? We don't have a problem in the parking lot, but you locked it anyway. How many of you locked your house? Isn't it amazing? We lock our cars and we lock our houses. But we just let life and the devil come right in and take the good things of God. And just say, well, I wasn't meant to have it anyway. But just leave your house unlocked and they come in and take everything just say well I wasn't meant to have it anyway the devil comes in to take your joy lock your heart lock your mind don't let him have it he's got to go through the blood of Jesus to get it anyway the past present 
in the future. With every head bowed and every eye closed while they begin to sing. Amen. The first group I want. Such great the devil's tried to rob you of your joy because of the past. Because of the past. The birds and you're ready to do something about it. I want you to meet me right here on this side of the altar right now. Maybe one, maybe ten. But right now, your past has been a joy robber. Your past has been a joy robber. But today God's going to help you. God's going to help you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Right Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's going to do some good things this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Sister Gina. Number two. Come on, Thomas. Come on right now. Come on right now. Hallelujah. Number two. What you're going through right now. What you're facing right now. The present. Because of what you're going through right now, you're having trouble keeping the joy of the Lord. Maybe it's financial pressure. Maybe it's marital trouble. Maybe things that you don't even want to talk about. But the devil's trying to rob your joy. Maybe sick in your body. Maybe trouble in your mind. The devil is a liar. Come on this morning in Jesus' name. And say, God, I need help. I need the joy of the Lord in facing what I'm facing. Hallelujah. There's something right there. Hallelujah. The devil is a liar. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Glory to God. Glory to God. Number three. Number three, the future. You always worry. You always worry about what might happen. You're always scared of tomorrow. Power today and Christ You're worried about what's going to happen. What is what is? Yes, I'm saved. Come on. I'm saved. His blood is on me. His blood is on me. Hallelujah. His sin he has brought me. And power today and over. Christ all the time. Jesus said that your joy might be full. These have stepped out this morning because their joy was not full. Maybe your joy is not full, but you need to step out as well. Church, meet me at this altar this morning. Come on. Come on in around the presence of God today. Hallelujah. God loves us with an everlasting love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, that your joy may be full. Oh, Lord, I love you this morning. I praise and magnify your